This game ended with two brilliant moves. Welcome to another tournament recap. My opponent was a 2200 player from Germany coming all the way here to Italy to play against me. And he had the white pieces started off with knight f3. Now this is not your typical knight f3 that you would just encounter. This had a very specific goal in mind. My opponent wanted to move order me into the opening of his choice. So after I go d5, d4, knight f6, so typical development, nothing crazy that we haven't seen before, e6, knight c3, and now I go c6, and this marks the semi-slav defense by the black pieces. My opponent goes e3, knight bd7, we continue to develop, and after knight queen c2, and I develop my bishop to d6, i.e. if my opponent goes b3 in a silent move here, I can just go e5 and then I can even try for e4 with a great spatial advantage in the center. So my opponent plays bishop d3 here and now we transpose into what I would call the Meran variation of the semislav once I take here on c4. Now other people will suggest that castles is the main move. In fact, in Sam Shanklin's chessable course, he does recommend castles first. I decided to go with d takes c4, tempoing the bishop, bishop takes, and now b4, b5, attacking the bishop, bishop moves, and now we go bishop b7. My idea here is simply to go a6 and c5 in classic semi-slav fashion. My opponent castles, and I go a6. Here b4 was actually the main move, which is a kind of a game changer. I mean, now my opponent can go with e4, and this kind of mix matches things up here. e5 is threatened with a fork. It takes a lot of space in the center, and I have to go with e5, something that's well in my preparation. And now my opponent stuns me. My opponent plays bishop g5, a move that is not really played in the database. I think it has seven games in mine, and this idea is to really just pin my knight, but it's, it doesn't look that nice because I can just kick the bishop. I go with castles, which is a novelty for a reason. It's inaccurate. Here, black should have gone with h6 first, bishop h4, and now c5, attacking this center and even letting in a protected pass pawn for the white pieces. For some counterplay here, I would go c4, attack the bishop with tempo, and here I would have a three on two against the d5 pawn. But I go with castles and I let in this very interesting, very aggressive, forced variation for the white pieces. d takes e5, I take with my knight, knight takes, this is all forced, bishop takes, and now f4. My opponent attacks my bishop. I can't do anything in the world here. If I just move my bishop back, e5, and now my pinned knight is just lost, and I'm, I'm just losing, so I may as well resign. So here I'm met with two choices and now i'm gonna ask you which one would you play in a real live game put yourself in my shoes here i have an hour and 16 minutes on the clock would you take this knight or would you play bishop d4 check on this king only one of the two options doesn't give the advantage to the white pieces i was thinking between both of them but one seemed very clear to me out of process of elimination you see if i trade here on c3 number one I give up the bishop pair, which I don't love. So queen takes, and the pressure on this knight is looking good, e5 is coming in, and basically I have to play check here on the king, king h1, and c5 to like defend everything here. And even this, I mean, it's just leading to a bad endgame at best for the black pieces, and this is the minimum that I calculated. So I didn't like this at all, and in fact chose bishop d4 check. And this is really important to understand my mistake way back in castles. So after bishop g5, the reason why c5 is so good is that if white chooses the same exact variation, only now I haven't castled, now the pawn on c5 is played. So I have bishop d4 check, the king moves, and now I can go h6 attacking the bishop, bishop back, and queen b6. My pawn has moved to c5 way back earlier, and in this line I haven't castled, but my queen on b6 is directly defending my knight. Which is why, when we go back to the game, there's a huge difference after bishop d4 check. I cannot play queen b6 to defend my knight here, because after queen b6, we'll simply put, minimum, I lose a, a pawn. So in the game I actually went h6 bishop here to avoid those things, and now I go queen b6, but I was so scared about this. 
if bishop takes knight, bishop takes, e5 is a tempo move on my bishop. My bishop goes back. Now f5 comes in and f6 will come in and my kingside castle is just absolutely destruct, destructed. I don't want anything to do with this. And so this is why bishop takes is actually the best variation. B takes is the best for white. And now I go h6, bishop back and queen b6 check, king here, and knight uh, c5. And this is the best variation for black. Hard to believe, I give the bishop pair. The pawns are in the center, it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. So here, I was just like hoping for my life that for queen b6, that takes wouldn't happen. In fact, takes is not the scariest, says the engine, but e5, pressuring my knight to trade off here, and White finds a lot of comfort after rook f3 for this rook lift rook g3 and just nailing my king down with maybe bishop f6 coming in. It's like very scary, right? But after queen b6, a small miracle happened, I guess. My opponent takes 30 minutes off of his clock. He only used 8 minutes for the first 17 moves and now comes up with this mistake, knight e2. And immediately when I saw 92, because I was thinking on his time, I was like, this is a mistake because I haven't seen it. I haven't seen this move when I was calculating for him what white should play in this, in this position. And after the game, he was like, yeah, I completely missed bishop takes f6 or e5 ideas. Knight e2 aims to take my bishop, queen takes, and then maybe e5 in. The only thing that I dislike about this move is that it just gives me time to defend my knight horizontally with my queen. And now, for the first time in the game, I can smile at equality. Wow. Knight takes. Yes, I do give the bishop pair, but albeit after a move like e5 now, it's rendered completely hopeless after knight d5, and this is very scary for the white pieces for the first time of the game. So I was very, very happy about this. My opponent goes with rook ac1 instantly. You can see the time change on his clock. A minute taken for rook ac1. And now I have a question for you, the audience. In this position, what would you play between rook a c8 attacking the queen and rook along this file or rook e8? So first I'm going to preface this with this looks, it's a mistake, it looks like a very silly move because it looks like it aims to colonize the d file with queen c5 or queen c7, but it just flops to rook a c8, kicking the queen immediately, and now I can trade rooks, etc right? Or I don't trade rooks, I just play rook here. After rook a c1, he has the idea that I will go rook a c8, and after queen e2 defending this pawn, he always needs to defend e4, that I will trade here, and now I will play the magical tactic knight takes e4, sacrificing a piece to win back a pawn. And he said, oh, five moves down the line, here I have bishop h7, and now your rook is undefended because you traded it off on c1, and now I can just take back your rook, and white is winning a full rook up. So obviously, I saw this, and I didn't go into this line, even though, if you said rook a c8, it is the better line, because after queen e2, you just swap rooks, merrily, merrily, and now you go rook e8. Instead of sacking on, e, on e4 with the mistake, you just pressure e4. And this pawn, I mean, e5, e5 is not looking good at all, knight d5, right? And if bishop takes, queen takes f6, and black now has a small edge. So well done if you said rook a c8, the obvious and the good move. I played rook e8, however, just pressuring this pawn immediately, but there's a small problem. Here my opponent takes, and now after queen takes, I haven't traded off rooks on c1, and this pawn is defended. Remember in the other line, after rook a c8 in this line, after takes takes, I was pressuring this pawn on f4, and that's why it's a small edge for black, Black has the initiative. It's funny because before this position transpired with the rook e8 on the board, before my opponent played so quickly here, I was thinking after bishop takes f6, I even don't have to take that bishop because of rook a c8 first, getting the c file, and then after I can take the bishop. But this is wrong because bishop takes d4, of course, sacrificing the bishop again, but winning a pawn, and after queen takes queen e2, and white is fine up a valuable e pawn. All this to say, after rook a c1, rook a c1, and then rook e8, on bishop takes f6 by my opponent, now I can play it. Rook a c8 at, at once, attacking the queen and the rook. Now the queen has to move. If you take on d4 now, 
I can take on d4 and now queen here is not enough because I can trade the rooks and black just wins this pawn back. Not only do I win the pawn back, but man oh man do I like my heavy pieces in the center of this chessboard. Wow. That even looks like I'm winning a pawn there. So I missed rook ac8 here. And yeah, it just reminds you to not instantly take a piece back, right? I had the idea from earlier on, I just had to recycle it into this position. So e5, I was fine here. I was feeling very, very confident. My bishop, for the first time of the game, is looking like an absolute monster along this open light square diagonal for the first time. I have ideas of queen d5, batterying up on the light squares, and queen h3, going on about this pin here of the g2 pawn, and even axing my queen laterally against this bishop on d3. Things are cooking for the black pieces. My opponent goes b3, and if you've watched the whole video till now, and if you are gonna watch the end, please do not spoil the rest of the video for the people in the comments. I'm seeing a lot of people trying to spoil and ruin other people's times. Yeah, just please. <laughs> so my opponent plays b3 because he thought that I was aiming actually at taking this a2 pawn, which was never my idea in that position. Here I go queen d5. And I had an option between rook a c8, again getting that c file, or queen d5, and one of them is bad, it's queen c5. I'll tell you the difference. I thought that on rook a c8, queen d2, queen e2 here, and now on queen d5, well then just rook c e1, and my queen looks like an absolute clown on d5, because it's just going to be kicked next move. And so queen d5, I play, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm skipping out on you being here on e2, but I just missed that rook e c1, and now the bishop comes to e4. Instead here, I had something very creative. Rook a c8, the queen goes to e2 or d2, and now queen h3. I plaster my queen on c3 very nicely, and I can even go with some rook c3 things in the future. This was an opportunity to get a small edge once again in this position. I go queen d5, it's a mistake. Rook c e1, Rook c8, rook c8 attacking the queen, and now queen d2. The bishop is coming to d5, a nice skewer is coming, and now you need to find the one move that defends this as the black pieces. So what should you do? In this position, you're trying to defend against bishop d4, let's say a random move, bishop d4, queen d7, bishop takes, queen takes, and queen takes d4 winning a pawn. So it's your turn to play, black to play in this position, and try to defend to the best of your ability. And the defensive move is absolutely genius. I would rate this a 2600 puzzle for the black pieces. The move here is queen d8, best move to defend. Number one, you're defending against the skewer, bishop e4, trying to win that pawn on d4. Also, your queen is off the presence of the e5 pawn, so you have to mitigate a move like f5. And here, the defensive move after f5 is queen g5, neutralizing the key attacking piece the queen on d2. And after this trade, this endgame is not obvious, but certainly not advantage to the white pieces. I unfortunately missed this and played rook e d8, a mistake taking my rook off of this pawn. Yes, I'm defending against this because now I would retain my pawn on d4, but I am not defending against f5 because now this pawn is sufficiently defended by the rook and these pawns are absolutely storming in. I'm getting nervous, I'm super nervous. I have 11 minutes left on my clock. There's only one defensive move, once again, for the black pieces. Try to solve it. It's incredible, really, what these computers come up with. It's rook c3. Here I'm threatening to win a piece because I'm threatening checkmate on g2, right? So bishop e4 is the obvious rebuttal to rook c3. And now the engine is suggesting that I sack a queen for two pieces, and I come in with threats of rook c2 to get on g2, and the engine evaluates this equal or slight, ever so slight, advantage for the white pieces. Absolutely insane. With five minutes on my clock, I muster up queen c5. My idea is to trade queens here, the last opportunity to try to stop white's attack. But unfortunately, after f6, it's just way too strong for the white pieces. My best move is rook c6. I'm low on time, low on position, not a good hand that I have. Queen c3, queen d2, and now I have g6. My opponent comes on in, 
with very, very strong moves. After e6, he barges in to my pawn structure, dislocates my strong alliance of pawns here. And either I take this pawn and let this queen in or this bishop in, or I play bishop d5, trying to defend and keep my pawns together. And here my opponent plays brilliant move number one, bishop takes g6, sacrificing the bishop. If I take the bishop here, f7 check, king h7 and e7, might as well resign in this position with tr three queens gonna, gonna happen on the board. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so here I take this pawn with my bishop. I have one minute left. It's over anyways, but just for the show. And I see my opponent's combination. I'm like, okay, let's just let him play it on the board. I'm not gonna resign on his turn. Now he plays the second brilliant move, bishop takes f7. If I take with my bishop, queen g4 check, and there's checkmate on g7 almost no matter what. And by the way, my opponent chuckled before you played bishop takes f7. I was kind of frustrated about that. <laughs> Anyways, bishop takes f7. If I ignore it, I'm down a piece at the minimum, but like, okay, queen e4 is probably checkmate in a few moves. So I, I take with the king and I say to myself, queen h5, it's mate, but in five moves he has to find it. And then my opponent just takes on e6 and I'm like, oh no, it's mate in two moves instead. Here I resign and I have zero out of two in one of the strongest tournaments I've ever played in, in Sardinia. My next round, I'm against a Fide Master with also zero out of two from Turkey, who's 2200. I have the white pieces though. See you in recap number three next video.